Before we get into blueprints, we need to tackle another topic which will be a huge part of this course, and that is physics. As you might have seen in the beginning animation, the actors I'm using acting physically correct, they are dynamic rigid bodies, and this is something we need to set up before we move forward into any kind of functionality. Now at the time of this recording, the current version of Unreal Engine is 4.25. And 4.25 is still using the physics engine by NVIDIA called Physics. In 4.26, Epic Games will replace that physics engine with their own developed physics engine called Chaos. Now, Chaos will also introduce a few new features such as destruction, but it's something we will talk about in a different tutorial. I had a look at the preview of 4.26, and as far as I can see, the way how you set up physics and how you work with them hasn't really changed. So most likely anything I'm talking about right now will still be valid in the versions moving forward. Now to start the party, I need to drop in my geometry into the scene and scale it a bit smaller. I also want to deactivate receives decals as I'm using a few decals and I don't want them to affect this geometry. Next up, we want to look at the physics settings in the details tab. By activating simulate physics, you tell Unreal Engine to treat this geometry as a rigid body and it will simulate at runtime. As you can see, gravity is automatically enabled, so that should all be set. Now, how can we make this thing actually simulate? Now, in order to do that, we need to have a look at the buttons up here. As you can see, there is a play button, which basically means play this level in the active level editor viewport. We didn't use that in the introduction course because we were just creating a visual, but as soon as we are dealing with functionality and simulations, we actually need to play the level to see those. So let's press play once and see what happens. Now there are two things that happened. Number one, I was thrown out of my current camera and I'm really far away from the scene. And secondly, if you might have seen it, this actor is basically just dropping into infinity. Let's tackle these two things independently first. Regarding the camera, we would have to tell Unreal Engine to use a camera at runtime because it doesn't take over what we're using in the editor viewport right now. Unless you are not inside an active camera and you just move close to the actor, and then press play and then it will take the last position you had in the viewport. But we will set up a small blueprint script to tell Unreal Engine to use an active camera after we looked at the physics section. Now the reason why this actor is just falling through the floor into infinity is because it doesn't have any collision mesh assigned to it. A collision mesh is basically a placeholder geometry that is preferably low poly that Unreal Engine uses to calculate the rigid body simulation. Now, if your actor actually didn't fall through the floor and it seems to have some sort of collision activated already, that most likely means you had auto-generate collision activated when you imported your FBX into the scene. The collision mesh for your geometry can be set up by double-clicking on the static mesh component that you imported into your library. Now, once you're inside here in the toolbar on the top, you will find this little button which says collision drawing options. If you click on that, you will see two options, simple collision and complex collision. Activating simple collision will not change anything as we are missing a collision mesh right now. If you turn on complex collision, you will see the wireframe of your actual mesh. The reason for that is that complex collision basically means Unreal Engine will use the geometry itself to calculate collisions. You can activate that feature by scrolling down in the details tab and changing the collision complexity to use complex collision as simple. The project default is usually simple and complex. Now, I do not recommend you to use complex collision as simple as it might have a really huge toll on your performance and things might get rather slow. The project default simple and complex means that Unreal Engine will use the low poly geometry you assign to the mesh to calculate all the physics and collisions. And this is usually the preferred option. Let's turn off the complex collision option again and just focus on the simple collision and the reason why we're not seeing anything in here. Now there are many different ways to set up your collision meshes. One way is to add collision meshes by using the options up here. For example, I can add a sphere simplified collision and Unreal Engine will calculate a rough sphere that surrounds my mesh that is um, visualized by these green lines you see here right now. Alternatively, I can create a more complex mesh by using these options here, which will try to get a bit closer to the shape that I actually have inside here. Option number three is to actually create multiple collision meshes and manually sort of adjust them to what we need in this case. So for example, I can add a box simplified collision and if I click on the collision, I can actually start scaling and rotating it and sort of start getting it closer to the geometry inside here. I can add another box simplified collision and adjust that accordingly and I can add a third simplified collision and adjust that accordingly. So by doing that, I just used three really simple boxes to create a collision mesh that roughly resembles the shape of my geometry. 
Obviously, this heavily depends on how accurate you want your simulations to be. So it's a bit of a balance between performance and accuracy. Let's save that and press play again and see what happens. And as you can see, our actor is now colliding with the floor. As we are just using a box for collision, it is standing still and is not rotating around the edges of the geometry. So that's rather inaccurate right now. Another option to create the collision geometry is in the lower right of the editor and is called convex decomposition. Using this one, Unreal will try to generate a geometry that is much closer to your original mesh, depending on the settings you dial in here. For example, if I crank these up really high and press apply, we will see these new green lines popping up here that are rather close to the actual mesh. Press save and press play and you will see the simulation is now a lot more accurate as the actor is tumbling over to the right. Last but not least, and possibly the best way of creating your collision geometry is by creating your own custom collision meshes inside the 3D application that you work with and tell Unreal Engine to use those on import. Setting up your custom collision means you need to do that in your 3D application. This might sound like a lazy excuse, but I do not want to spend too much time in other 3D applications as I just want to focus on Unreal. Nevertheless, I want to give you guys a bit of a hint on how this works and what you need to look for online to find the documentation you need for the platform that you're working with. Ultimately, it's really straightforward. It's about naming conventions. So if you look for UCX workflow Unreal, you should pretty quickly find the exact naming conventions you need to use. For example, in Houdini, you need to assign a geometry to a group starting with collision underscore geo underscore UCX. In Cinema 4D, you need to create the additional collision geometry and put it in the hierarchy underneath your main mesh and use the naming convention UCX underscore the name of the mesh above it underscore and a number. Now, when you've exported that geometry into an FBX and you want to import it into Unreal Engine, you need to make sure that auto-generate collision is turned off. Otherwise, Unreal Engine will ignore your collision meshes and just generate its own collision. At the same time, you might want to make sure that one convex hull per UCX is turned on, as this means it will respect the amount of custom collision meshes you generated and not decompose that into separate hulls. Now, one last thing to mention here, we've seen convex quite a few times popping up in this discussion. And this is because when you create a custom collision mesh, it needs to be a convex shape. It can't be concave. So it means like a bowl can't be a bowl. It needs to be separated into several meshes that are all convex and don't have any empty space encapsulating them inside. So hopefully one of those many ways of creating your collision geometry worked for you and the geometry you want to use. And we can move forward to create some blueprint functionality.